Hello, Network to Code community. My name is Tim Fiola. I'm a developer advocate here at Network to Code. And today I'm going to be doing a couple of chat ops demos for you. Now, before watching this video, I highly recommend you watch the prior video I just did covering the chat ops framework. That'll give a bit more context to what you're about to see. First, I'll be doing a Nautobot chatbot demo. I'll be doing this demo in Network to Code's public Slack workspace, specifically in the Nautobot chat channel, where we have an interactive Nautobot chatbot where you and anyone in the public can interact with the Nautobot chatbot and kind of get a feel for how the uh, chatbot operates. We're now going to demo a Nautobot chatbot in the Network to Code public Slack workspace. And you can access this workspace and then you can go to the Nautobot chat channel, which is where we are right now. And so with that, let's go ahead and demo a few commands that you can do here. And keep in mind, this is gonna be very conversational, which makes this very easy to use. If we type in Nautobot and just hit return, it'll tell us all the commands it knows. So what we're gonna do is let's say we're interested in looking at a rack elevation. So we can say Nautobot and then we can say get rack. Okay, then go ahead and hit return. And now Nautobot will conversationally walk us through the information it needs to give us the information we need. So we will go ahead and first start a site. Let's look at uh, Dallas-Fort Worth. And now it's saying which rack in DFW would you like? And we'll just say 108. And here we go. So if we expand this information right here, okay, this rack doesn't have a whole lot in it. It does have one device in it, DFW Leaf 8 in rack position, rack elevation position 44. Let's try a couple more examples in the Nautobot chat channel. Uh, one of my favorites is Nautobot get interface connections. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and filter here. We're going to get connections for just a device, a single device. We'll go ahead and select a site. Let's do Bangkok. And for a device, we'll say, let's do Bangkok. Let's do Edge 1. We'll click to expand these connections. Uh, and here we go. This tells us a lot of cool information. So look at, check this out. So you have your device A, which is gonna be Bangkok Edge 1, the device we selected. Then you have the, the local interface. Then you have the remote device and remote interface. So this is a great use case, for instance, if you have to have a technician on the floor, or if you are a technician on the floor for that matter, and you have to clean each edge, uh, end of the cables, this is a great way to do to find those edges, and it's very quick and very easy because you're doing it via chat. Let's go ahead and try another one here. Let's do um, Nautobot get device fax. Okay, and now it's saying, hey, we can only show you 100 at a time. We'll go ahead and select. Uh, let's go ahead and select Atlanta Leaf 6. Cool. So this tells us information about Atlanta Leaf 6 very quickly. The manufacturer, the model, the role, uh, and when it was uh, the information was put into Nautobot and when, when it was last updated in Nautobot. Next, I'll be doing an Ansible chatbot demo. Now, this is going to be an Ansible chatbot running on Nautobot's chat ops framework, but the, the Ansible bot is going to have no interaction with Nautobot itself other than the chatbot itself is going to be supported on the framework. We've discussed Nautobot as an automation platform, not just a source of truth. And Nautobot's chat ops framework is not just about Nautobot chatbots, it's about building chatbots for whatever underlying automation you need, be it Ansible, SaltStack, CloudVision, Appstra, Itential, what have you. And in that instance, Nautobot does not need to be a source of truth. It is just a platform to support your chatbots. So in this demo, we're going to use an Ansible bot supported on the Nautobot platform. Um, 
to, to run a job for us. So this job will be run in Ansible Tower. And now I'm in my, ch I'm in my uh, chat channel right now, and I've done the slash Ansible command, and that causes the Ansible bot to tell me what it can do. And notice there is a run job template uh, right here, and we're going to do, do that job. So we're going to say uh, Ansible run job template, then we're going to give it the playbook name, uh, and it's playbook config backup. So we're going to go ahead and kick this off right now. OK, the Ansible bot has told us now, hey, I'm, here's your job ID in Ansible Tower. And the configurations are now being backed up. And it's included here a link to the Ansible Tower job for us to reference if we want to. Now, we'll go ahead and do that here. As someone in operations, you might not need to see what's going on underneath the hood to this extent, but I'm showing this to you here to let you see what's being activated as a result of us telling the Ansible bot to back up the configs. And this may take a moment. OK, so what this playbook did is it went out to all the devices, got the config, compared the config to the configs in the repository for each device. And if there was a delta, it backed up the new config into the Git repository. If there was no delta between the, the two configs, the current config and the prior config, it didn't update GitHub. Okay. And if we look back here in the channel, the the Ansible bot is telling us, hey, the network configurations are now backed up for the devices. And if we go to this channel, I mean, excuse me, if we go to this GitHub repository, we can see um, the different um, the different config changes for each device. Okay. Well, this has been a demonstration of an Ansible bot performing a task for us. And what I want to emphasize here is this has nothing to do with source of truth data. This is not a bot supporting an Ansible chat bot to help us do something else. And we can do those tasks, interface with these tasks through a Slack channel in this case. This concludes our chat ops demo. Thank you and have an awesome day.